Hey guys, what's up? My name is Chaotic and welcome back to another Grand Theft Auto 5 video here on my channel. Now in today's video, I'm going to be going through and breaking down the best armored and bulletproof vehicles in GTA Online. Now of course there are loads of armored and bulletproof vehicles to choose from in GTA Online, all with their own special abilities, their advantages and disadvantages, but in this video we're going to be summarizing the vehicles based upon their prices, the bulletproofness, the explosive resistance and speed to give us a score out of 20. Now currently in GTA Online there are 18 different vehicles which are in the armored and bulletproof category which you can buy and own as personal vehicles including the Night Shark, the Insurgent, the Insurgent Pickup Truck, and the Insurgent Pickup Truck Custom, the Duco Death, the Karuma, the APC, the Rhino Tank, the Benefactor XLS SUV, the Galavanta Baller and the Galavanta Baller Long Wheelbase, the Cognoscenti and the Cognoscenti 55, the Shafter V12, and the Long Wheelbase Benefactor Shafter. So, there are certainly loads of vehicles then in the armored and the bulletproof category, but the question is, which ones are the best? Well, starting off with the Heavy Night Shark, the newest armored vehicle available in GTA Online, this can be purchased from the Warstock Cash and Carry website for $1,245,000. Value for money, in my opinion, is pretty good, giving this a score of 4 out of 5. There's quite a few customization options available for it as well, such as armored plating around the vehicle and on the windows. And when it comes to driving around on the roads, this thing is so big and heavy, it is perfect for smashing into vehicles and ramming them out of the way. And of course, don't forget the Night Shark also has machine guns in the front bumper as well. Admittedly, they aren't all that powerful and they're very limited because you can only shoot where the front of the vehicle is facing, but it has weapons nevertheless. Then when it comes to the vehicle's bulletproofness, now if you do fit the armor plating to the windows, as you guys can see, from the front at least, when people shoot the armor plating, bullets will not go through and hit anyone inside. Unless of course they shoot the glass in the middle, bullets can go through there with one shot potentially killing you, but from the front, it's not too bad. From the sides, however, unfortunately, they don't do anything whatsoever. The armor plating is just there for looks, for cosmetic purposes. They offer no protection whatsoever, and it's a similar situation from the back as well. Overall, though, from the front, because there's some pretty good protection with the armor plating, we're going to give this a score of 4 out of 5 as well. Then, as for Night Shark's explosive resistance, on its own, it takes 5 sticky bombs to destroy it, but if someone's sitting inside of the vehicle, it will take up to 8 sticky bombs, so giving this a score of 5 out of 5. And then finally, as for its speed, despite being a big and heavy SUV, it's actually one of the fastest armored vehicles in the game, taking 26.23 seconds from the start line to the end of the runway. So for speed, we'll give the Night Shark a 4 out of 5 also giving the Night Shark an overall total of 16 out of 20. Moving on though to the next vehicle, and up next is the regular Insurgents. Now this Insurgent is actually fairly well priced at $897,750, unless of course you've completed the Humane Labs Raid, which then allows you to buy this at the trade price of $675,000. The Insurgent is definitely very good value for money, so we'll give this a rating of 5. Moving on though to its bulletproofness, and unfortunately, this thing has very little to none. As you guys can see, although the glass itself is resistant, it's not all that strong, and players inside can be killed very quickly with just a few bullets, scoring it just a 2. As for its explosive resistance though, the Insurgent can take quite a few sticky bombs, 5 in total, to destroy it, giving it a score of 4 out of 5. But then, as for its speed, well, unfortunately, the Insurgent is a big SUV, so as expected, it's not quite as fast as the Night Shark, taking 28.3 seconds to get from one side of the runway to the other, scoring it just a 3 out of 5. But overall, the Insurgent scored 14 out of 20. Then, skipping the Insurgent pickup truck for the Insurgent pickup truck custom because it's a better, storable version, this of course can be purchased from $1,350,000 if you completed the Humane Labs raid and then upgraded to the custom variant for just $200,000 at your MOC. Personally, value for money, this thing is right up there, scoring 4 out of 5. 
There are also some pretty cool customizations available for this too, such as an upgraded turret, armored plating around the vehicle and on the windows, and so on. Unfortunately though, all this armor plating is useless. As you guys can see, in the terms of its bulletproofness, you can shoot the glass out and the plating on the windows does nothing. The only plating that's actually available to fit to this vehicle that does anything is around the turret. So because of this, it will only score 2 out of 5. But then when it comes to explosive resistance, on its own it takes 5 sticky bombs to destroy it, but if someone's sitting in the driver's seat, it takes up to 9, making this one of the most explosive resistant vehicles in GTA Online, and of course scoring it 5 out of 5. As for its speed though, it is slightly slower than the standard Insurgent, taking 28.52 seconds from one side of the runway to the other, scoring this just a 3 out of 5 for its speed. So in total, it also scores 14 out of 20, but because the Insurgent pickup truck has a turret on the roof and just looks even more badass, it's definitely worth choosing over the standard Insurgent. Moving on to vehicle number 4, this of course being the Duco Death. This is still one of my favourite vehicles in GTA Online, it's just badass and awesome, and of course can be free to some players if you're a returning player, otherwise it only costs $665,000, which isn't too bad either for the awesome vehicle you get, so of course scoring this 5 out of 5 for its price. Then for the vehicle's armour and bulletproof, now of course there are a few gaps in the windows where you can be shot from, but the armour plating on the windows is in fact armoured plating, it's not just there for cosmetic purposes, so we'll give this a score of 4 out of 5 for its bulletproofness. Unfortunately though, in the terms of its explosive resistance, the Duke of Death on its own isn't all that good. It takes just two sticky bombs to blow it up, unless of course someone's inside the vehicle, and at that rate, it can take between four and five sticky bombs to blow it up. So it's not too bad, and we'll give it a score of four out of five for its explosive resistance. And then as for its speed, the Duke of Death is a fast car as well, taking just 23.29 seconds from one side of the runway to the other, so we'll give this a score of 5 out of 5 as well for the speed, meaning overall it scored 18 out of 20. Moving on though to the next vehicle, this being the Armored Karuma, which I'm pretty sure is one of the most popular vehicles on this list. Now of course you can purchase this from $525,000 if you completed the Fleeker job, which I'm sure pretty much everybody has, and if you haven't, you can still purchase it for just under $700,000. So in the terms of its price then, it scored 5 out of 5. And as for bulletproofness, well this thing is absolutely insane. As I'm sure you guys know, from pretty much every angle, there is no way of being shot, apart from one small section on the window on the side, which is, I believe, caused by a glitch or bug in this vehicle. Otherwise, you're completely invincible, and this scores a 6 out of 5. But unfortunately, this vehicle is let down by its explosive resistance. Just one sticky bomb blows it up, only giving it a score of 1 out of 5. As for its speed though, this vehicle is very quick, again, one of the faster vehicles in the category, but is slightly slower than the Duco Death overall, taking 24.13 seconds from one side of the track to the other. Overall though, we'll give it a score of 5 out of 5, giving it a total of 17 out of 20. Up next is the APC, and this is by far one of the coolest vehicles in GTA Online, in my opinion. It may not have many customization options available for it, but you can of course upgrade the turret on the roof to the SAM battery, which is massively overpowered. The APC can be quite expensive though, costing $3,092,250 if you haven't completed the associated mission. Otherwise, there is a massive discount on it with a price of $2,325,000. Which is still a lot of money, but it's also fairly reasonable seeing this vehicle is also amphibious, so we'll give it a score of 3 out of 5 for its price. As for bulletproofness, well unfortunately the windows are not resistant whatsoever, but the windows on this thing are also minute, it'll be very difficult to shoot you in one of these, so we'll give it a score of 3 out of 5 as well for bulletproofness. And don't forget the APC is also fairly resistant to sticky bombs, taking 5 to destroy it. Then as for its speed, well as to be expected, it is a much slower vehicle than the previous ones, taking 36.28 seconds from one side of the track to the other, so overall only scoring a 2 out of 5 for its speed, giving it a total of just 12 out of 20 overall. 
The half track is also another cool vehicle added recently in the gun running update. It's fairly unique as well with the tracks on the back and it's not too expensive at $1,700,000 if you've completed the associated mission. It will be pretty expensive though if you haven't, costing just over $2,250,000. So although it's expensive, it's also fairly unique as well, so we'll give it a score of 3 out of 5. The half track also has a customization option, which allows you to fit armored plating to the windows, which actually works, as you guys can see in the gameplay. Of course, the glass in between is not bulletproof or resistant, so you can still be shot through it, but overall it's not too bad, giving this a score of 4 out of 5. It takes the half track four sticky bombs to blow it up, so we'll give it a score of three out of five for that. And as for its speed, well, again, it's fairly slow because it's a tracked vehicle. And as a result, it takes 44.02 seconds to run the track, only giving it a score of two out of five for its speed, meaning overall it's only scored 12 out of 20. Now the Rhino tank is also in this lineup, yes it is armoured and it's also bulletproof as well and it's not too expensive, costing just one and a half million dollars. But because it's a Pegasus vehicle and not a vehicle you can store in your garage, it will lose a few points for that, giving it a 4 out of 5 for its price. The Rhino tank is also bulletproof, it's almost impossible to kill the driver once they're inside of this, but there is one location that you can actually use the heavy sniper at, and I'm pointing at the location right now with the sniper. It's very difficult to actually shoot that location on the Rhino tank whilst it's driving around, but if you manage it, that's the only way you can kill the driver. And it takes 8 individual sticky bombs to destroy it. If you throw several at a time and then detonate it, it will take a few less, but one at a time, it will be 8, giving it a score of 5 out of 5 for its explosive resistance. Speed though really is where this tank is let down. It may have a really powerful cannon, but it takes 52.23 seconds from one side of the runway to the other, only scoring it 1 out of 5 meaning overall it scores 15 out of 20. Now moving on to the SUVs, the first one we have is the Benefactor XLS. Now this vehicle will cost $522,000 to purchase, which personally value for money isn't exactly there. There aren't many customizations and what this vehicle has to offer is rather limited, only scoring it a 2 out of 5 for its price. Moving on to bulletproof resistance, now this vehicle is not completely bulletproof, but the windows are bullet resistance, giving this a score of 3 out of 5. The windows can withstand quite a few shots, and it takes 3 sticky bombs to destroy the XLS, giving this a fairly good resistance to explosives, meaning this will score a 3 out of 5 as well for explosive resistance. And then as for its speed, it scores a 4 out of 5 because the Benefactor XLS is fairly quick, taking 26.06 seconds from one side of the runway to the other. So overall, the XLS has scored 12 out of 20. Moving on then to the Galavanta Baller and the Galavanta Baller Long Wheelbase. Now these two vehicles are pretty much identical, apart from of course the Long Wheelbase version being about a foot longer in length, but their prices are quite different. The short wheelbase version is $374,000 to purchase, which I think is fairly reasonable value for money. The long wheelbase version though is $513,000, and like I said, there's no real difference between the two. So personally, as long as you guys are happy with having a shorter vehicle, go and buy the cheaper one, value for money is definitely up there, scoring it a 4 out of 5. The windows are also bullet resistant all round and can take quite a few shots before penetrating and potentially killing anyone inside, scoring it a 3 out of 5 for its bulletproof resistance. And just like the XLS, the Galavanta Baller also takes three sticky bombs to be blown up. The Galavanta Baller is slower though than the XLS, taking 27.08 seconds from one side of the runway to the other, making it a whole second slower, but overall it's still a fairly quick armoured vehicle, scoring it 4 out of 5, putting it just ahead of the XLS with a score of 13 out of 20. This next vehicle, the turreted limo, isn't really worth talking about all that much. It is very bad value for money because it's a Pegasus exclusive and it costs $1,650,000. So price, it scores 1 out of 5. The windows though are bullet resistant and can take a few shots, giving it a score of 3 out of 5 for that. And as for explosive resistance, it also takes 3 sticky bombs to destroy the limo. But with this being a limo, it's not particularly quick. It takes 31.04 seconds to run the runway, scoring this just a 2 out of 5 for its speed, 
meaning overall it's only scored 9 out of 20. Up next we have the Cognoscenti which is in blue and the Cognoscenti 55 which is in purple. Both cars are very, very similar. The only difference is really being the Cognoscenti is slightly longer, slightly slower and has a silver grille instead of black. It's also slightly more expensive, costing $558,000 as opposed to just $396,000 for the Cognoscenti 55, which isn't too expensive giving it a score of 3 out of 5 for its value. The windows are also bullet resistant like many of the previous vehicles, but in the terms of its explosive resistance, it only takes two sticky bombs to destroy both the Cognoscenti and the Cognoscenti 55, scoring it just 2 out of 5 for explosive resistance. Its top speed though isn't too bad, only taking 27.15 seconds to run the runway, which means it scores a 3 out of 5 for its speed. Overall though, it's only scored 11 out of 20. But finally, the last two vehicles we have are the Shafter V12 and the Shafter Long Wheelbase. Now of course both vehicles are fairly similar and have the same number of customizations for each. The Long Wheelbase is slightly more expensive at $438,000 whereas the Shafter V12 is just $325,000. Both have bullet resistant windows, scoring it a 3 out of 5 for that. The explosive resistance is the only thing that really lets this car down, only taking two sticky bombs to destroy it. But the Shafter V12 is the fastest car in the armored category, taking just 23.02 seconds to run the runway, scoring it a 5 out of 5 for its speed. Meaning overall, the car has scored 15 out of 20. So there we go then guys, that is the full list of armoured vehicles that you can buy in GTA Online. And to summarise, the best vehicle then, according to the points system to buy, is the Duco Death, scoring an 18 out of 20. It has a good explosive resistance, it is bulletproof from some angles, and is also the second fastest in the category. And of course, if you're a returning player, it's also free. The only thing though the Duke of Death doesn't have is a weapon system on it. And I know in this lineup we haven't rated the vehicles based upon their weapons, but if we did, the best value for money vehicle would be the Insurgent Pickup Truck Custom, solely because it takes up to 9 sticky bombs to destroy it, the upgradable turret is pretty powerful, and it's overall a decent vehicle. So there we go then guys, with that being said, that's pretty much it then for this video. But I of course want to get your thoughts and feelings on all the armoured vehicles in game. Which ones are your favourites, and which one do you choose out of all of these to be the one which you think is the best to purchase in GTA Online? If you guys could also drop a like on this video as well, it would of course be greatly appreciated and it helps me out a lot. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, then please do, because I upload all the latest and the greatest Grand Theft Auto 5 content. So as always guys, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you guys next time.